Good morning, day four of 2 Corinthians, and uh, this is our final day through the most emotional of all Paul's letters. This is a church that Paul had planted some time before this. He had visited them twice already. He's now preparing for his third trip. He's written at least four letters to them. He's been separated from them, and in that day and time, it took a long time to get messages to the churches and to, to get feedback from the churches. It was a very, very stressful experience for Paul as having planted these churches. This was his life's work. This was probably the most important work of the most important man who has ever lived outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's not an exaggeration. You and I are probably saved today because of the work of the Apostle Paul. We're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of people today who are Christians because of the churches that Paul planted. He was doing the greatest work in history. This was very important. And he bore the burden of the churches that he'd planted so heavily on his heart. And this church, although it had been planted with great power, with great manifestations of the Holy Spirit, yet it had now fallen into much sin and corruption and division within itself. And this was fueled by the, the coming, the infiltration of these false apostles. So Paul is dealing with this and throughout the reading this morning, he's, he's defending his own apostleship, though he says, I'm a fool in boasting. But if you want me to boast like these people boast, okay, let me boast. And then he ends up boasting in his weaknesses and all the, all the struggle that he had gone through to plant the churches that he had. Anyway, he closes the letter with the following statement. He says, finally, brethren, farewell. Become complete. Become mature. Be of good comfort. Now, that's the phrase I want to pick up on this morning. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Okay, so what I want to ask is, the God of love and peace, for the God of love and peace to be with you. I mean, don't you want that to be the testimony of your life so that at the end of your days, you can look at those around your deathbed, so to speak, and say, you know, I can honestly tell you my life was blessed. The God of love, the God of peace was with me and he never left me. I certainly want that to be my testimony. Now, I want to ask the question. The comfort of that, be of good comfort, says Paul. How can we know the comfort of that hope, that the God of love and peace will be, looking into the future, he will be with us. Therefore, I, I can be of good comfort. I've got hope for the future. How can that be? And I want to ask the question in two ways. What does Paul not say? Because it's, it's actually really instructive to see what he's not saying that you've got to do. And then what does he say you've got to do? And the thing I want to pick up on this morning is in the light of the whole letter of 2 Corinthians, it, is, it, it, it almost stands out when you see it that he does not say to the Corinthians, you need to become poor. You need to give away all your money. You need to be made humble like I have been made humble. Paul contrasts himself, his own life, with the life of the Corinthians throughout the letter. Corinth was an incredibly wealthy city. And this church was a wealthy church. And yet Paul contrasts his own life. And I mean, a number of times through the letter, he's talking about his life as an apostle, how he is continually in poverty, in sleeplessness, with fastings, in hunger, in prison, being beaten by the Jews, in shipwrecks, in perils of the wilderness, in perils of the sea, in perils of my countrymen. I mean, he just lays out the incredibly brutal life of, of poverty that the apostles lived for the sake of the gospel. And yet, Paul does not try to say, well, that's what I love you. If you want to be a Christian, you have to now disappear into the wilderness and go and join some monastery and take a vow of poverty. That's not what he says. 
In fact, he says, I delight in the fact that you are rich and that you reign. And in fact, he said, I could wish that you did actually reign as kings. In fact, you do reign. You are wealthy. You've got power. And I delight in the fact that you do. I am pleased that you do. And in fact, I am pleased that I could serve you through all the poverty and hardship and weakness that I have experienced in order that you might be saved and live with this kind of freedom and, and wealth. I delight that it is so, says Paul. That is quite astonishing. And, and why does Paul delight in his own weakness? Because he's found, he's found something even better. He says, I delight in weakness because I have learned that when I'm weak, then I am strong. Strong in the ministry. Strong to preach. Strong to lay hands on a sick person and see them miraculously healed. Strong to pray for a group of people to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the Spirit freely falls and the gifts of the Spirit manifest. Strong to come into a, a situation of need and pray and see the Holy Spirit deliver and do miracles and signs and wonders as he's talking about this morning. He lived a life in which he delighted. He loved the power of Christ that rested upon him. He loved walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. And for him, he was willing to give up all the wealth of the world to know the power of Christ that rested upon him for his calling as an apostle. And so he wasn't jealous of their money. Now, the point I'm making is that if you are not called as an apostle, if you're not called into the ministry to bear weakness so that the power of Christ can rest on you for the ministry. It, it may very well be okay that the weakness of the ministers who serve you empowers you to live a life of wealth, of influence, and yet a life in which the God of love and peace is pleased to be with you, even in your wealth, even in your influence. It is okay. You can be of good comfort. Okay, so that's, Paul does not say you've got to give up your wealth and power. Fascinating, even though he could have been looking up and so jealous, he wasn't. So what does he say? And as we read through the verses today and, and actually the whole book of 2 Corinthians, what he says is you've got to, you've got to stop sinning. You've got to give up the fornication, the sexual immorality. You've got to give up the, the, um, the drunkenness, the, the, the lewdness, the idolatry. You've got to live with purity if you want the God of love and peace to rest on you. Live a holy life. Become mature. Become complete, says Paul. And the God of love and peace will be with you. The other thing he says is you've got to contend for the truth of the gospel. These super apostles that have come in amongst you as a church, they are corrupting the gospel. We can do nothing against the truth, says Paul, but only for the truth. The, the unity which I am saying you need to have as a church, the, the, the putting away of all these contentions and jealousies and outbursts of wrath and, and, and tumults among you where I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos and all this, these jealousies and these, these factions, you must be of one mind. You must... Live at peace with one another, which, by the way, is another thing that you've got to have within your local church for the God of love and peace to be with you. There must be love and patience within the local church. God wants peace and yet not at the expense of truth. You've got to contend for the gospel and live at peace with one another. These are the things that God wants from you. And if you do that. God is pleased for you to enjoy the good things that he gives you to enjoy. Well, that's wonderful news. So be of good comfort, but seek to live pure, a, a pure life. Seek to become mature. Seek peace within your local church and with other Christians. While you defend the truth and the purity of the gospel and 
you can be of good comfort knowing that as you, you live the rest of your life, the God of love and peace will be with you. Amen. Well, I'll see you tomorrow when we pick up in Galatians, the, this um, sort of mini book of Romans, where Paul is defending salvation by faith in Jesus alone. Um, again, defending the truth of the gospel, as we've just seen. He wants the Corinthians to do exhibit A, the book of Galatians. So I'll see you as we pick that up tomorrow.